You know, my wife and I are, are walking through something right now. Um, our, our oldest daughter, uh, Bella, just turned six years old. And when she was born, I don't know if you can remember back to the birth of your first child, but just how exciting of a time that is. And we were just enjoying that process so much. And I remember my wife coming back from her four-month checkup, and she said, uh, Mike, there's something wrong with Bella. And I said, what are you talking about? She's fine. Everything's great, you know. Um, and I'll spare you the story of misdiagnosis that we went through for an extended period of time. But what it turned out to be is that the, the cones in her eyes, some random genetic thing that she got, some, the cones in her eyes don't function. If you're not familiar with the way the eye works, uh, your cones is what helps you see your kind of central detail, your fine detail, helps you see colors, and it also allows you, most importantly, to see in bright light. And so Bella uh, has reduced visual acuity, uh, doesn't see any color, and uh, outside in bright lights, the, the brighter it is, the worse she sees, and in, outside in, in the sunlight, she's essentially blind. And so as we were kind of wrestling through this, um, you know, you just start to think about a lot of those things you, you take for granted when you have kids. That, hey, we're going to go outside and play ball. Um, or, you know, you think about enjoying the colors of a sunset. Uh, you know, we start to think about things in the future. Okay, how's school going to work? And, and how, is, how is driving? You know, things like that. And so, you know, we, man, pulled out all the stops. I mean, we fasted weeks at a time. We stayed up all night praying, you know, everything we knew to do. And uh, there, there was no change. And when she was three years old, we came on staff here at Gateway, and that first year at Gateway was a really strenuous year for our family because prior to being on staff here, I'd traveled and spoke full-time for about eight years. And so by the time I came on staff here, I already had about 40 engagements booked for that following year. And so that first year was a lot of me working here during the week and traveling on the weekends, trying to honor some of those obligations. And we also happened to be building a house during that year. And then smack dab in the middle of that time, we had our second daughter, Mia. And so it was just a really busy time, and, and when she was about two months old, we started to notice some of the same symptoms that we'd seen in Bella. And so, sure enough, uh, found out that she had exactly the same condition. And so I remember in that moment, um, you know, just the level of, of disappointment, of confusion, of, you know, asking the question, why? You know, I remember Alicia at one point telling me, she said, babe, what are we going to do? And I'm, I said, I don't know, you know. And I remember that night that we found out we just put on some worship music because, I mean, what else do you do in those kind of moments? And we just begin to worship the Lord and just remind ourselves of his goodness and his character, of who he was. Because if you've been in a situation like that, there is a temptation in those moments to want to form a theology about God that's based on your circumstances instead of based on what he's revealed in his word. But the truth is, I share that story with you not to highlight the disappointment. Listen, we're still praying and believing God and we believe the outcome is going to be incredible at some point that we'll see that miracle take place. But, but I believe the enemy wanted to use that situation to get us maybe to take our hands in and to stop hoping for things in the future. And what I can tell you is since that time, the amount of miracles that our family has experienced is incredible. I mean, I, even physical healings even. I mean, my back was bothering me horribly for two years and right there at a gateway service a year ago, my back was miraculously healed. We've seen breakthroughs in our finances. We've seen miracles in ministry opportunities. Even with the girls where God has led us to this random clinic in Indiana where they make these specialized contacts that shield some of the light. And for the first time, we were actually able to watch, you know, our girls go outside and play a little bit. And I don't know how well they see, but they seem to love it. Um, so um, we've just seen miracle after miracle after miracle. And I say that because maybe there's some of you out there that you've experienced some disappointment and maybe you've made that decision. It's just too hard and I'm going to stop hoping. And I just want to encourage you today to continue, maybe to make that decision to open your heart again, to trust God. Because it's true, look, we live in a fallen world. We're going to face a disappointment from time to time. But I'll tell you what, God wants to do amazing and lots of miracles in your life. And we need to continue to look to him for those things.